If you're a recording artist with a computer and a home recording setup, and you wanna learn how to fully produce your own music, not just fully produce it, but actually how to release it, and how to create content around it, in this video, I'm gonna break down how I'm producing and putting out my newest single, building on my own. I'm gonna show you literally from the top to the bottom how I made the beat, how I wrote the lyrics, because I did kind of do some unique things with songwriting, how I mixed it, how I mastered it, how I put it up on distribution to go out to Spotify and Apple because I did also do something unique with that. Um, how we, how I made the cover art and how we filmed the videos for the content. So literally from top to bottom, from the scratch of blank session to the beat, the writing, the recording, the mixing, the mastering, uploading it and actually creating content around it, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into the computer. This will be a bit of a long one. You're definitely gonna wanna take notes. You're definitely gonna learn a lot from this. Let's jump into the computer, let's get after it. So we'll start, I'm just gonna give you a preview of the intro and the chorus for right now, and then I'll break down how everything sounds and the beat and everything like that. So let's rock and roll. Sweet. So, um, I'll start off with what I always do when I start making beats. I always start with melodies. So I started with, let me just put a loop. I started with this, uh, this piano and I actually, I played this. Oh no, I didn't. I'm tripping. I used unison MIDI wizard. What am I talking about? So I used, um, I used this tool called let me show you it real quick this one's fucking crazy unison midi wizard so this tool is nuts we use it midi wizard 2 is what i just pulled up yeah so basically like you can click you can pull up like instruments and you can click and it'll literally generate you like here i'll show you real quick i'll just solo the thing Right, it's fucking crazy. So I used Unison MIDI Wizard to generate me um, <laughs> this upright piano. And then I did the same thing here with a different piano. Right? Um, then I used Distant Voices. I used Arcade by Output to do this. And I think like the way all the melodies really dance and bounce with each other are cool. The way everything just plays with each other is great. Um, after that, drums, clap, kick, hi-hat, and then 808. I actually played in the 808. Pretty simple, and then I have this one little crash for just the chorus, so you listen to it. Boom, you get the picture, right? Um, so that's how I made the beat. In terms of the actual chorus, like writing the chorus, I kind of have this thing I do where I will kind of, <laughs> it sounds really oversimplified, but I kind of mumble my way through writing it. So I'll put on a track and like, I'll be like recording. So I'll, I'll actually show you exactly how I did it. Um, actually, yeah, perfect. I'll show you like, so I'll have a track, right? Turn it down a little bit. Yeah. 
and I'll, I'll, I'm going to break these plugins down. Um, I'll break what this is down and um, what the other plugin is, but I'll just have like a track and I'll kind of mumble my way through recording. Like, just mumble and mumble and mumble until I come up with something, pretty much. Um, and I just have fun with it. I'll grab the phone, write some stuff, and basically just have fun with it. So I had, so I had what was called a hook screenshot. So I only had the chorus for a while, and I had the verses empty. So what I want to do is I want to show you, like, in terms of the songwriting process, how I actually went through songwriting. So. I had the uh, the beat right here in my notes app with just the chorus, and I was like, okay, what I like to do is when I have a beat, you guys see like I have like all these beats in my notes app, beats to write to, and these are all just like, they have some lyrics too, I should probably finish some of these, but like I have a bunch of beats in here, obviously I made all of these, and by the way, like imagine this by the way, like I don't know if you're in this position or not, but like imagine like having these are all beats i i made that i own the rights to like i can't even count them so if you're in a position where you're like damn like i would like to be like making beats and have this many beats at my disposal like that'd be super cool you, like you could easily come out with an album ep you could easily start putting out singles um uh, if that's the case then you know click below apply to work with me one-on-one -on -one in my rapid fire music academy it's where i teach recording artists how to become their own producers in just 90 days so so i had the 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 song like right here. And as I was taking the song throughout life with me, I was like, you know what? Instead of just starting to write lyrics, let me write the stories first. So in the first verse, right, I have it. And it's kind of like, it's got a happy vibe to it, but like it can still be like that motivational vibe that I like. And I was just like, man, you know, I don't know why, but building on my own, like makes me think about the past and it kind of makes me think about how did I get here to this point where I'm making music full time, right? Making six figures off my music. So I was like, talk about starting music my senior year of high school in 2011, who inspired you, all these different things. And all I, all I was thinking about was, let me just bullet point what I want to talk about. And I didn't talk about every single one of these topics in the verse, but like I kind of got the idea. Then verse two. So what happened is what I always do is I always reproduce my verse twos, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So like my verse two, I have brand new drums, brand new um, melodies and stuff. So let me let me show you what that sounds like. So literally like brand new instruments, and then a different 808 comes in too. Right? And I was like, you know what would be really cool? It would be really cool if I had a little juxtaposition where verse one's got this kind of happy vibe and more motivational vibe. And then verse two is like, you can see right here, demon mode. How hard's the journey? Times you want to quit. People flaking on you. People trying to hold you back. Doubting yourself. All the dark shit comes out. And um, that's how I went about the songwriting. Okay, And then I wrote the lyrics. Now, when it comes to recording, um, what I'm going to do is show you something really interesting. What I do is you can see the vocals are here but I actually record in a separate session. So I'll bounce out the beat and I will record in a separate session. So here's that beat, right? And then I have the vocals here. And so what I'm gonna do, and why do I do this? I do this because I, I do a process called pre-mixing your vocals. So I'll solo out the chorus lead without plugins. This is what it sounds like raw. Been building on my own. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. I know, voice of an angel. I get it. Chill. I understand. I'm the next Justin Bieber. Blah blah blah. blah. Okay, <laughs> but then when I put on all these plugins during the recording phase, here's what it sounds like. I've been building on my own. Better tuning. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. Crispier, smoother, stronger. The same cause they trying to put the blame on me. Flat. Shame on my name, but not tuned. On me. Been the same since the first day. Much better. And all it is, it's very simple. Just 
I use uh, tuning. And by the way, when I do tuning, when I record, I'm like this. When I record, I, that's how I do it. And then I'll, I'll scale it way back, you know, kind of knowing I'm going to do some tuning at the end. Then I use this plugin called Sheps 73. It's like a preamp. I use Waves plugins, by the way, mostly. So when you get Waves, you get access to all their plugins. Waves Creative Suite. 25 bucks a month, you get every single plugin. It's like 211 plugins. This is one of my favorite plugins. I'll show you what it sounds like. I've been building on my own. Yep. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. A little bit of compression. And it ain't the same because they trying to put the blame on me. Putting shame on my And then a de -esser to soften up the S's and been P's. The same since the first day. Never Not too crazy. And that's literally it. And I'll do that for all my vocals. So the reason I do this is because, like you saw, you heard how it sounded flat. Not that good. Um, so I'm not going to save that. So now, when I come back here into the mixing phase and I take those vocals that you just saw and I put it here... Like, I'll show you the chorus vocal. I've been building on my own. That was that vocal I recorded previously, but it's already... So as I come into mixing, I come into mixing, it's already sounding pretty damn good. It's already sounding crispy, strong. Obviously, there's some more stuff that we did, which I'll show you, um, but it was, it, was, it was already sounding good. But before I mix vocals, so now we're getting into the mixing phase. So before I mix vocals, I take an approach for mixing called, uh, I call it top down mixing. I learned this on fucking crazy from a YouTube video from a guy named Tizio, who, uh, who's Chris Brown's engineer and he does this. So what we do in the rapid fire music Academy, and by the way, when you join the Academy, you don't just learn how to make beats, but you learn how to make beats, how to write songs, how to mix, how to master. Um, we even teach you how to get high paying clients with your music, which is dope as fuck. So one of the things we do when it, when it comes to mixing is we just mix one instrument at a time and we start kind of in priority. So I do kick, then clap, then 808. So I'll have my kick. This is what it sounds like without plugins. Right? Pretty much just pretty standard. I'll throw an EQ, compression, and then a limiter. Simple as that. And what I do is I literally just go down the line one instrument at a time. So And I solo it. So kick first. And then it was the clap. With the clap, I just did EQ compression. And then I did the bass, right? Pretty much the same thing. Bass was EQ, compression. Magma BB tubes is like a warmth saturation plugin. Little limiter to bring it out. Then I throw in the hi-hat, same thing, and I'm just wanting to get everything sitting well together. That's all I care about. Is this all sitting well? After it's sitting well together, I'll bring in the next thing, the piano, and I'll mix it. EQ, compression. Same thing with the next piano. Kinda hard to hear it, but EQ. Compression, now it's sitting. Same thing with the uh, vocal job, right? EQ. Compression. Pretty solid. After that, what I'll do is then I get into mixing the vocals. Actually, after that, what I did was I went and did all of that with all the stuff from verse two. Now, in terms of mixing the vocal, this is going to be really surprising. So like what I'm about to show you, I don't teach in my academy because it's too simple. But if you are, you'll see, this is crazy. So I, I use just two plugins to mix my vocals, X Pitch and X Vox Pro. These are both made by Neuro Audio. By the way, I don't have affiliates with those. I should get affiliates with all that shit, but I don't have it. So here's the vocal without X Pitch, but I'll show you what X Pitch looks like. I freaking love X Pitch. Um, so good, so good. I've been building on my own. I'll turn this on in a second. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. Little bit robot-y, but just catching the notes. And it ain't the same because they trying to put the blame on me. But then the next plugin is the big one, Xbox Pro. I'll show you. So if you've never seen Xbox Pro before, this plugin's it's crazy. 
I don't personally recommend it for beginners, even though it is completely beginner friendly, like it's meant for beginners. I don't recommend it to the clients in my academy and I don't tell them about this. I showed them this on the group call last night, but I don't, we don't teach it because you'll, if you're, if you're a beginner and you grab a plugin like X Fox pro X pitch is fine. It's a tuning plugin, but if you go grab a plugin like X Fox pro, you're never going to learn how to truly mix. Like if I had grabbed X Fox pro eight years ago, I never would have learned mixing. So I'm glad that I didn't, but now that I know how to mix and I'm like, look, I'm in this phase right now in my career and in my music and in my life where I really just want to bang out songs. Like I want to, I have so many songs in my vault that I'm like, I, I, I want to mix, but at the same time, I'm like, dude, I really just want to get this shit done super fast and get hella music out there. Like that's kind of the mode I'm in and I'm trying to finish this album. So I'm like, what can I do to get like, what's the minimum viable product to get this shit done quick? So here's what the vocal sounds like before and after um, Xbox Pro. Same cause they tryna put the blame on me Putting shame on my name but they didn't change on me Been the same since the first day Never running late Early to my own party on his journey to be great Same cause I mean obviously crazy Let me show you in the mix Same cause they tryna put the blame on me Putting shame on my name but they didn't change on me Been the same since the first day Never running late Early to my own party on his journey to be great and they, they have a ton of presets and shit. Um, but I always will, like, I'll, I'll use the presets and I'll change shit around and edit it and stuff. But yeah, like, this plugin's fucking nuts. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Again, if I, if you're a beginner and you're like, hey, I want to learn how to really mix, don't get this plugin yet. Uh, but if you're just like, bro, I'm just trying to fucking bang out songs, then like, yeah, honestly, Xbox Pro is pretty cool. Uh, I had a chorus layer that had hella extra uh, effects. Shame cause they trying to put the blame on me. Putting shame on my name, but they didn't change on me. Then I had um, two deeper register vocals um, just to add layer. Shame cause they trying to put the blame on me. Right, so then all together. Same cause they trying to put the blame on me. Putting shame on my name, but they didn't change on me. Been the same since the first day. Never running late. Early to my own party on his journey. Solid, right? So that that's pretty much how I mixed all of that. Um, one thing I did also, I want to show you on the drums. I kind of forgot, but on the drums, I had this plugin called Drums That Knock. Again, <laughs> this is made by Decap. It's an amazing plugin. I I put this on the entire drum stack. So if you listen to my drums, they're not bad. I mean, they sound pretty good. When you throw this on here, brings everything out one little bit at a time. This plugin, if you're a beginner, I would still get this because you're still going to need to EQ and compress your stuff. This is more of like putting it on the entire stack. So yeah, that's how I did that. Um, final thing I do with mixing always is I always do this, this thing called mix bus compression. So let me explain what that means. Here on the stereo out track, which the stereo out track, that's the track that affects the entire song. So I throw an EQ on my stereo out and all I'm doing is I'm just going, finding things that I like, don't like, take them out, add stuff. Right? And then and it ain't the same they throw a little compression on there to make the song sound louder. And then this next plugin I'm going to show you is kind of crazy. So this is Ozone 10 and it's actually meant for mastering, which I'm going, we're going to go through the mastering phase as well. But I do this thing. It's got AI assistant, like literally, like if you click this, you click play, it will like AI master your entire track. So what I do, and I saw this on Instagram, this, this tip I'm about to show you. So I click that, I click the AI thing. I let it do its thing. It pulled up a ton of plugins. I deleted everything except for the EQ and it kind of analyzes your EQ and will give you what it thinks you should do to clean it up or add things to it. So let me show you. It's going to be really hard to notice it, but a little before and after. I've been building on my own. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. A little bit more control on the low end, a little bit more in the high end. It ain't the same cause they trying to put the blame Listen to the vocal.
a little bit muffled, a little bit more bright open, right? So that's kind of what I did there. The very, 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 I mean, the last thing I'll show you, I don't wait till the end for this, but this is a little meter. It's called WLM meter. You don't need to use that. If you're in Logic Pro, you could go to, um, I think it's loudness meter. Let me check. Yeah, you could do this too and just see like what's going on. But essentially, what this is something like brand new that I've been doing recently, and it's really changed the game for me, like really changed the game. So when you look at the volume of the song, like you might be like, oh shit, this shit's clipping. But like, is it though? Like it's clipping, but at the same time, it's like, well, it sounds good though. Like it's not bad. Like it's not really sounding like it's clipping. What's going on here? The truth is your DB, like, I don't know. Like I used to really follow this to a T and I used to be really big on this. You got to leave headroom. Like, yeah, you got to leave headroom, but I don't know. Like I've been not using this and been like, I don't care what this is at. What I care about is called LUFS, which is loudness under full scale or loudness units, full scale. Fuck. I don't remember, but yeah, it's one of those <laughs> anyways. So that's, that's like the thing is like, when I finish mixing, it's peaking at, I think it's going to peak at negative 10 or negative 9 LUFS. When you're mastering, you want it to, again, for me, for hip hop, you, I'm going to have it peak at like negative 8 or even negative 7. And um, that's going to really help. You, the, the big thing is you want your song basically, basically you want your song to be as loud as possible, as loud as possible, Okay. You want your song to be as loud as possible and still sound clear. So when we click this, we're just going to check the short term and we're going to see where it's at. Sweet. So like negative 10, solid. And I probably could even push it more, but like, that's fine. Like that's solid. Negative time, negative 10 is, um, that's all good stuff. So. Now what we're going to do is I'll show you how I mastered the song and close. No, don't save. So we're going to go into mastering and yeah, I open another. So, I mean, it's kind of a lot, like, I don't think you have to master this way. Some people master right in the same session as the mix. I don't do that. I like to have another. So yeah, like every time I make a song, it's three sessions. It's the main session, which is going to have the beat and the mix. It's the recording session. And then it's the mastering session. So I'll just show you really quick where we're at. What it, and I don't, I'm not going to go every single plugin and like every detail, just not to bore you. But um, yeah, I turned off. This is Ozone 10. I turned it off. I'll show you what it sounds like on and off. I've been building on my own. Sometimes you just need to let some people go. All right, I'm going to turn it on. kind of skipping a little just that's just from ozone so yeah i, I mean it just kind of opened up the song a bit more not much but one thing you'll want to note is here on the right this is the output the lufs so watch that happen right now um while the plugin is on i've been building on my own sometimes you just need to let some people go just at that negative eight negative 7.9 i i tried pushing it more to like negative seven but it kind of started getting like really not sounding good so i just kept it at negative eight so if you think about it the mix is peaking at negative nine and then when i when i finish it starts peaking at negative eight which is great because this song is like no brainer 100 percent loud enough like it is certainly loud enough so that's we literally just went through the full production what i want to do now is I want to show you like this is a little bit um, not typical for a like production thing, but I want to actually take you into DistroKid and show you how I uploaded it. So I use DistroKid. I do have an affiliate for them. If you want to click below, you can use my affiliate link for DistroKid. So if you want to get your music up on Spotify, Apple, I, I love using DistroKid for that. I've been using it for a long time. They're great, really easy to use. Um, customer service, TBH is 
not that good, <laughs> but uh, they, I don't really have a lot of customer service issues anyway, so it's fine. So I'm going to show you how I did this. So you're going to see my song. It's right here, Building on My Own, and you'll see four tracks. Can't Change Me, three, going up, two. What's going on here? I do what's called the waterfall release strategy. I think most people do this for albums, but I don't have any albums out coming out yet. When I do, I have an album coming out, but... Um, but these are not part of that. So when you click on building on my own, you can see like there's there's the uh, cover art for it, building on my own. Um, it's shot on an iPhone, by the way. You can tell it's not like the best quality, but I think it's fucking sick. Um, you can see that there's four songs here. So like the way it works, like when you upload it, I love to do this where, so like you take the ISRC code. So this is the first one that I dropped, uh, nothing I won't have. By the way, how baller is this pick, right? Um, the ISRC is like, I guess it's like the code that like tags the song. So that's the ISRC for nothing I won't have. The next song I dropped was Going Up. And when I uploaded Going Up, I uploaded Going Up. This I made with AI, sick, huh? The, the, this Going Up, I made, um, I put it out as what's called, I guess technically an album. See how it says album title? And I did going up, but then I also strung with it nothing I won't have with the ISRC code. So every time, my bad, I meant to show you, can't change me. Every time, I didn't make the artwork, my boy Chris drew this by hand. How fucking sick is that? I have talented friends. Um, when I did can't change me, it was the same. You string going up, string nothing, and you just keep stacking songs together. I think the idea of this is more for albums. So like, if I were to drop an album with all of these songs, and they all had streams. When I dropped the album, those streams would be associated with the album. BT Dubs, I don't give a fuck about streams. I really don't care. I don't put any emphasis on it. Like, I legit don't care anymore. But I just think this is cool for when people play my song, the new song. And then right when they play it, they're like, oh, here's the other ones too. Like, I just think that's cool. I'm not doing it to get more streams. I just think it's kind of lit. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you how I did that as well. And then the next thing I want to show you, which is going to be cool, I'm going to have to uh, send shit through uh, AirDrop, but um, I want to show you kind of how we went through doing the content as well, and I'm not going to like show you all of the content, but um, I'm going to show you this one, this one clip is just fucking nutty. So I'm going to AirDrop this one clip to myself. So I airdropped the clip. So I'm just going to like, I'm not going to play the whole clip, but we literally shot this on an iPhone. And like, maybe you can tell. And it's literally just like, I went out with my boy Gabe and we found this super dope spot. We live in the Bay Area. So like we, we've got views out here. And uh, like, like bro, like look at that golden hour. Like we could see the end of the whole Bay. I think we went to some like, lutheran or lds church and we just saw this and we're like oh snap like this looks hella sick like really and it's like way up on a hill it's like up in the oakland hills and i was like cool whatever like it just looks dope you already know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do like the words on top and the words on the bottom and we got tons of content like we got so many videos we got the picture there and like i just edited the pic on um canva a little bit it's not the most high quality pic but i don't know like i just like it i think the iphone aesthetic is super sick yeah i don't really care that it's not the most quote-unquote high quality i just love the vibe and i think that it gives a bit of a relatability so that's how i did it that's literally how i made my song building on my own if it's not out yet it's going to be coming out on let's see the 23rd on the 26th. Yeah, I was right. So it's coming out July 26th. If you're watching this and it's already out, you can click below and go stream it. Go listen to it if you want. And uh, really appreciate you watching. Hope you got some value out of this video. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.